Hi, this is Scott Garibay, and today we're going to talk about Dungeons and Dragons, and we're going to talk about the D and D OGL 1.1 uh, leak firestorm of 2023, and specifically, we're going to talk today about another outrageous, completely unfounded assumption that many companies are now making a major mistake on um, in response to the Hasbro OGL 1.1 leak. Um, and the idea that the OGL, that if you have a good OGL, it will help your tabletop role-playing game, right? This, this is completely unfounded. So let, let's dig into this, right? So first of all, let's, let's talk about the companies that are now coming out. So Cobble Press was the first one. There are, uh, so, uh, there's a few now, like there's multiple, uh, so Cobble Press has announced, um, Project Black Flag, right? And they were like, oh, hey. We're going to make our own system, and it's going to be OGL, okay? Now, there are at least, at least three other, um, uh, and by the way, Cobble Press is under Wolfgang Bauer, and uh, he's been around for a long time, uh, making content, um, and what were some of the, uh, oh, MC, uh, MCDM, right? I think MCDM, uh, yeah, that's right. So, Matt Colville, MCDM, they announced uh, they're going to um, put out their their own um, tabletop role playing game, and I'm fairly certain they also announced it's going to be OGL. So, so let's let's just okay, let's use Cobbled Press as a template, and I, I guarantee, I I in my strong opinion, right, that we will have ten to twenty corporations, and right now there's at least three or four. There's a actually the character sheet did an entire list of companies that have responded and said. We're going, there's at least five. I just can't list them now. I'm sorry about that. There's at least five companies that have said we are going to directly compete with Dungeons and Dragons, okay? Um, and we, we're going to create our own role, rules and we are going to um, do it under, and, and almost as an afterthought, like just not even thinking about it, they're just like, it's going to be OGL, right? Open gaming license. And you're like, uh, okay, let, let's think about this. Why? Right, so here's the thing: if if OGL is strong and it produces sales and it helps your brand, why is Hasbro trying to desperately move away from it? Right. Well, for the for one thing, it's it's incredibly. I I can tell you all the reasons I think Hasbro wants to leave the OGL now. Okay. First of all, um, the OGL uh, like when you're like, hey, when a new person comes in there, like, hey, what's a you know what's a, a Dungeons and Dragons um, adventure? You're like, oh yeah, let me let me show you the Dungeons and Dragons adventures. Um, so what is a Dungeons and Dragons adventure, right? So uh, here's uh, Dragons of Storm Wreck Isle. That's a Dungeons and Dragons adventure. And they're like, oh great, hey, well, wh what's all this stuff over here on the DM's Guild? And you, you know, and right away, right, they're not going to find the same level of quality over on the DM's Guild. Maybe they get lucky and they hit something that has eighty percent as much quality. I doubt anything on the DM's Guild has even 80% of the quality of Dragons of Storm Rick Isle, right? So, and you can get, and you might hit some absolute, you know, black and white, poorly written, poorly laid out, uh, you know, bad adventure design nonsense that's sitting on the, the, the DM's Guild, and there can be confusion for new people about what this is. So get, so one is D&D quality, right? As long as you have the OGL, that's, that's not a, a given, right? If you're buying actual... Hasbro product, that's quality, okay? Sometimes there's a slip, well, I'll, I'll say it, Radiant Citadel, not a great, not, not a super quality product, right? Very good art, very good writing, very good layout, terrible, terrible, fundamental uh, problem with, there's nothing in it for, for players, there's not a single new magic spell, not a single new, um, there's not a single new, ma new spell, not a single new magic item, not a single new species, not a single vehicle, nothing. Like, there's nothing for, for players in that book. That's not quality, right? That's, you know, I, honestly, I keep, you know, I'm keeping uh, Radiant Citadel on, uh, you know, on my shelf just to remember it from a historical structure. I don't I expect I'll ever use anything from that book ever, right? Uh, not quality. But generally, right, at a rate of about 90%, uh, everything coming out of Hasbro is quality, right? And the OGL, it's not even close to that, right? Like, you're rolling the dice. You're absolutely rolling the dice of quality with any OGL, OGL content because there's almost no 
there's almost no, you know, the standards are much lower, right? It's, it's, it's not a professional project. It's a garage band product. Okay. All right. Uh, so, and here's the big kicker, right? Let, let me get all the way there on this, right? So they're, so all these companies are now running out and they're like, hey, we're going to create our own rule system, right? And we're going to, um, and we're going to open it under the OGL. But the problem is, the moment you open it under the OGL, you're you're in Pathfinder zone, right? So the path, you know, so Dungeons and Dragons has this OGL, and they're trying to get out from under it because it's not helping them. It's absolutely not helping. It was help. If it was helping them, they would absolutely not be trying to get out from under it, right? It's causing confusion, and very legitimate confusion. Like, okay, there's Talidore Reborn. Is that a D and D product? I don't know, right? Like, doesn't say D and D on it, right? Exandria is it connected to Exandria? I don't, I don't know, right? Like, it's very confused. I know, I know, because I'm deep in the weeds in it, right? But it's very confusing for people who are coming in, right? And they don't know what's connected to what, what in Dungeons and Dragons, right? So, Talde Rory Reborn is a perfect example of massive confusion for brand confusion, right? So, first of all, all these companies are immediately embracing brand confusion, right? And 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 how do you beat Dungeons and Dragons? You need to get your, uh, um, you need, you absolutely, you need to get your brand name into the culture, right? To, to the point where people who don't even play your game know it, right? And so all these company, com- companies who need to be the biggest tabletop role-playing game brand in the world are immediately introducing confusion into their brand, right? Uh, in addition to that, We've already this this experiment is already run, right? Pathfinder is way deeper down the OGL than um, than than Dungeons and Dragons. In fact, they're so open open gaming license, right? That every book, every single book published by Pathfinder, you will find the content of it on an SRD, and all the contents there. The only thing is is missing is the um, is the art, right? Like, so they, like, literally, you could just go get the content from their books. I think it's as soon as, like, two or three months after they're published, maybe even immediately, right? They they publish their content for free, and it's super open, right? So that anybody can use it, right? And it was that way under, under 1, 1.0, and it was that way under 2.0, right? And Pathfinder is wrecked by Dungeons and Dragons. Their content is way more open, way more shareable, way more accessible, practically free, right, in many cases, right? Um, and with that said, they are not beating Dungeons and Dragons, right? So all these companies who want to beat Dungeons and Dragons are embracing a model that has been proven, right? Pathfinder is proof, right? They are far more OGL friendly, far more. Half their book, uh, half if not all their books are completely free without the art, right? You could just take all the content, right? And they are getting wrecked daily by, um, by, by Wizards of the Coast. In, uh, yeah, so basically the last time we had numbers for both companies was like 2019 and Pathfinder did $25 million revenue in a year against Wizards of the Coast, $875 million. Literally, I, th- I think I did the math earlier, and it was like 37 times larger. So there is zero proof, zero proof that the OGL will help you beat Dungeons & Dragons in any way. And there is massive evidence. There are lots of OGLs, right? Not a single, not a single OGL product has defeated Dungeons & Dragons. And the idea that these con- companies are going to open up they you know, are going to bring up their 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 rule systems, and that people will respond differently to the, in the future to the OGL, and even beyond this, like it, there's a problem that goes even beyond the industry, okay? And that is generally, especially Americans, we have reached this point. We have absolutely reached this point. Um, there are a lot of companies who want to put out free product, and they have stopped doing it. And the reason why is Americans are like, oh, it's free, it's crap. Like that, that is a very, very strong, um, you know, um, and and a lot of companies are like, you know, hey, we could give this out for free. We'd love to have some traffic come in, 
but we know for a fact if we just put five dollars on it people are going to instantly connect quality and respect to it whereas if it's free in america it is distrusted and automatically considered to be junk right so the fact that they're like open gaming license and then you know and here's the other one right all these companies are trying to beat Dungeons and Dragons, but the problem is you're going to have five to twenty of these companies all all coming out with brand new uh, brand new rule sets within a month to three months, ten months. You know, if they really take their time, right? And it is going to be and and actually they're going to cannibalize each other constantly. They, so that that's the issue. Is everybody's like, oh, revolt! We're going to revolt against the OGL 1.1. And the, and the reality is it is not going to work. There is absolutely zero evidence that the OGL has ever helped any tabletop role-playing game defeat Guns and Dragons, right? And the reality is with all these games coming out, all of them, you know, scrambling and putting up, you know, um, there's a possibility, a possibility that one of them will catch fire, right? Um, but I actually think the OGL will make sure that doesn't happen. Right, so really, if you want to see who's going to be the winner, I really think it's going to be the the winner is somebody who's like, hey, we are going to create our own tabletop, our our own rule systems, right? But we're not going to go OGL because there's absolutely zero evidence that OGL helps sales or helps any tabletop role playing game in any way, in any way, right? And if and for every OGL that you point to. That uh, you know that's out there that show, that has shown even a glimpse of success. I could point you to, to a bunch of OGLs that are not doing great and that are you know, don't even make it so their creator can quit their day job, right? I I think Blades in the Dark, right? That that has it's called Forged in the Dark, has an, a kind of an OGL that you can create under. I'm pretty sure. Um, I think it's John, his name is John Carpenter. Yeah, John Harper. John Harper. Brilliant. One of the best designers in all tabletop role playing games. I think he's still got a day job, right? That OGL didn't even make it so that it, his game would allow him to quit his day job, right? And his stuff's released under Fate, under uh, Fate's Creators, which I think is Blad App Games, and uh, it's it's a mess. Like it is just a, um, it's uh, Evil Hat Games, Evil Hat Games, right? Um, uh, it's a mess. Like it is just there's zero proof that the OGL helps anyone out. Will, will help anyone out perform Dungeons and Dragons and there's strong evidence right that by just saying hey you can freely attach to our stuff most Americans I think are like oh you have open access on your it's not a, a walled garden like Apple I do not want right all that's my humble opinion I'm ready to hear your humble opinion please go into the comments below and send your traffic please consider liking and subscribing have a wonderful millennium